What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terence? Good old humor. Good yeah. old humor, man. Yeah, so, uh, I was quite, I was quite, uh, quite, quite shocked just now, lah. Cause uh, I think I was, I was just bitching about something, and then uh. suddenly you were like, "Oh, uh, yeah." So we're recording already. And uh. I'm like, "Whoa, that's like, it's like um." You just did the intrusion silent, of privacy. Yeah. Intrusion of privacy. You did that thing. It's like filming, filming your partner in the middle of a hey, fuck you, know, you know, kind of thing <laughs> without informing them, without getting consent. That's what it felt like I, for me. I was I a victim. I literally said we are going to record. I hit record. There's a freaking number that shows up on your screen. Okay. I wasn't even on. I've, I've like you. I have learned to have three million tabs open. I'm not even on that tab at that point of time. <laughs> so you, and then you just hit record. <laughs> And then you got to ask for people's consent, Harish. Have, the, have you not learned from YouTubers hey, dude, past and present? I, you can't just do this dude, thing. Yeah. Don't give me this nonsense. This is our 398th <laughs> episode. No? We've been through this 397 times. Don't suddenly I make an just, accusation. <laughs> no, I'm just happily no. bitching about something. And then suddenly Harish, oh, we're recording already. And I'm like, what? Wow, that was not cool. You're not cool. In this so, day and age, man, not cool. So man, then now cool. the thing is, what was Terrence bitching about? Oh, mm. dun, dun, dun. Big question mark. Dun, yes. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> but, but yeah, kids, don't do that. Don't like hit record on your phones, whatever audio or video, without someone's consent. Like, yeah. Do and that. and people who have been through the the same kind of processes multiple times also understand that there is a certain level of familiarity that is that people get used to, lah. Feeling, oh, okay. yeah. If and if you understanding the process, decide all of a sudden one day, hey, you know what? Now I feel like this is different. Then mm, mm. you need to look at the context, Terence. Just yeah. now, if people were listening, they would think I'm a creep. Mm. Um, and in this day and age, in the news, there are a lot of creeps floating around. Mm. So, so it's a very, very accusatory uh thing you said, no, Terence. I know, but a wise man once said, uh, when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. So that's what happens here. I think both sides we assumed. I think you assumed that I would just I know that you're recording. I assumed that you I assumed that you would you would, you know, keep the decorum and at least inform me if you're if you're recording what I'm saying. That, yeah. that statement alone, right? You are putting yourself in a, on a pedestal. No? They're kind of like a supposed equal statement is nonsense. There is nonsense. Yes. That was just a wayang only, wayang. Yes, yes, yes. Uh but yes. yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, making an ass out of you. Actually, actually, yeah, we before we go into all that, um there there are some changes of foot for our podcast or so like, right? Mm. Um which which we do we we you know can start teasing now, I suppose. Mm. But uh yeah, I, uh because you know, we usually do a plug, but I just thought maybe we should just let everyone know that actually um, uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking us to 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 actually see what where our reactions are on our podcast and everything, rather than just hear them, right? Mm. So we are planning something in the near future of mm. uh possibly uh you know really moving on moving our entire podcast to YouTube, like, right? As in be able being able to see the full podcast in the, as a video on YouTube. But not moving lah. It'll be coexisting. Oh ah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can still you can still consume in audio form lah. Mm. Um, so supplementing it with the video as well, right? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. Um, and also starting an OnlyFans account, lah, so you can also see more of us. Yeah, yeah. But and, and it'll be entirely with consent, right? It'll have, it'll have yes, consent. Yes, 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 correct, correct. I mean, OnlyFans <laughs> is very consent-based, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. <laughs> yeah. Just oh, one, one, one update we did do in the back end, because what Terrence was talking about, front end going forward, what we might change, we actually shifted podcast host, like the mm. hosting mm. platform. So yes. hopefully, all of you all who faced streaming issues or downloading issues in the past, um, especially for the more popular episodes, uh, you shouldn't be facing it anymore. Mm. Uh, uh, Tristan helped uh, migrate our entire thing over, so shout out to him. Uh, but yeah, yeah, hopefully you don't face any more issues. Like If you do, please just give us a heads up. Yeah, yeah. So you see, we do listen to feedback. Uh, and we do, we, when we say we're monitoring, we're really monitoring. And when we find that there's a problem, we really do make the changes, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. Correct. Cool. But yeah, cool. 
yeah, I think I guess that was our plug, you know. Uh, but yeah, just keep you know if you have feedback, just keep giving it to us so that we also can adjust accordingly, lah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Cool. 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 All right. So shall, yes. we, shall we jump into the first uh, first topic? For sure. For sure. All right. Okay. So the the first topic is about uh another minister. It's a it is a minister driven topic. Um, mm. and it is about a speech that Chan Jun Singh gave, um, mm. who's the education minister, uh, that yeah. he gave at uh, Raffles Institution for its bicentennial lecture on Tuesday, May sixteenth. Mm. Mm. So, so I mean, like um, the what you might call it, it was a speech, but it was just interesting because uh. I mean, we've mentioned before on the podcast that both Terrence and I did study at RI for secondary mm. school. Mm. So we just thought, oh, it's an interesting thing to dive into. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but and, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Bicentennial, RI, uh, RI was literally founded in like 1823, you know. Yeah, man. Like four years after the British colonized uh, Singapore. Yeah. Or at least, what was it called? Singapore back then? Yeah, yeah. Colonized and then called it Singapore, like, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, four years later... They already founded the school already. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, Singapore was founded in 1817 or 1819? 19. 1819. Wow, bro. Oh, and what the fuck is 1817? <laughs> yeah. Bro, wow. Fucking, uh, uh, well, uh, you go RI, your history also. <laughs> it's history also, you feel history class. Uh. Then what wow, the hell uh, happened in 1817? Something happened in 1817. A lot happened in 1817, but it wasn't the founding <laughs> of RI, okay? Or okay. Singapore. Or Singapore, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh shit, 1817, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, so 1819, correct, 1819. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, no, so... Uh, oh shit, yeah, 1817, just some random person received knighthood. Okay, never mind. So, so 200, uh, 200 year anniversary, yeah, is the oldest school in Singapore, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and essentially, he was talking to, I think, uh, a few hundred students from mm. a bunch of different schools. Oh, yeah. audience of about 500 people. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was students from different schools. Um, mm-hmm. And he gave a speech and then he fielded some questions after that. And some yeah. quotable quotes la, that, that were used in the headlines of the articles that covered it uh, were things like, um, the, he urges RI to help bring out the best in wider education system. Um, RI has a duty to bring others along and let more mm-hmm. benefit. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we can go over like overall what he said before we dive into it. But but what, what made you want to talk about this specifically? Eh? Um, I mean, I, I found it quite interesting that uh, firstly that the event wasn't just like uh, only RI students, uh, right? That they opened mm. it up to students from other schools. So, and uh, like what the headline was saying, uh, that, that I think Chan Jun Singh made a point that it's not about... Uh, uh, about uh, you know, raffles, reflection, ex- exceptionalism, but about bringing others with you, lah, which is uh, you know quite. I, I, I as an RI boy who you know went there uh, during the nineties and 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 it was really during the formative years of your of your life. Uh, back then it was. I remember the rhetoric was always about you guys are the future leaders of Singapore, you know. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how many times I heard that, that phrase until it almost became like uh, what do you call it I, in, the, in those days we didn't call it a meme la, but we would just make fun of it la, future leaders of Singapore and all that la, right like people ask you um, what you want to grow up to be yeah. a leader future leaders a leader. I mean yeah, leader. yeah maybe maybe people who haven't been to RI uh, might not understand the context but RI really like there, there's a there's a overboding sense of um, history and accomplishment uh when you walk through the you know the the main halls and everything mm. because i remember back then maybe maybe it's not not so now but back then they literally had like photos of notable alumni just hung around like the the main atrium area right mm. under a giant a giant school um the, the, what do you call it the logo of the school mm. and like crest. photos the crest. yeah the crest yeah and then photos of all the notable alumni uh, not just politicians or what, but you know, doctors, surgeons, uh, you know, people who had so called made it in life, la. And mm. so there was this uh sense of like, oh, you know, you got to live up to the expectations of being a RI boy, and because you are the future leaders of Singapore, so you cannot behave certain ways and that, la. And mm. when you keep telling that to to a twelve year old or fourteen year old, whatever, right? It, it kind of like 
uh, I mean, for me, like, at least, definitely there was a little bit of that drinking of the cool aid. Like. Mm. And, uh, you know, for better or worse, it kind of makes you think like, oh, yes, yes, there's something exceptional about uh, being here, being an RI boy, and, you know, you got to, you work hard, that's why you're here with this group and all that kind of thing. Like. Um, mm. So, yeah, that, that was like, that's why I found it interesting to contrast with what uh, Chan Chu Singh is saying now. The message is really not about that you guys are a special bunch of people, but that you must do well, but also bring others with you. Mm. Mm. But for uh, you, why? Why was it? Why was? Why is this an uh, interesting topic for you? I think because in in the current uh, time where you know elitism and inequality is a huge ass topic, mm. um, it's just I, I just wanted. I found it interesting what is being communicated to youngsters. Because like, like what you said, mm-hmm. when I look back at it, I mean, they were great years of my life um, mm. and I did benefit from going there. Like. But it's something mm. now also, you know, as uh, I, I, I think we have spoken about this like outside of the mm. podcast. Like, hey, if our kids can go to RI, would we send? And I've, I've um, spoken about this with other friends also because there's that whole, oh, it's elite now is like almost like a very negative connotation like it, mm. there, there has been negative connotations in the past but now it feels like if you are part of the elite you are guilty unless proven innocent to a certain extent mm. Um, mm. and then you also see stuff like the most our recent podcast also was also about people in power having access to things that people not in power don't have to la. so mm. I just thought mm. it would be it would be interesting but I do also remember what, what you are saying like a future leader of Singapore so, mm. so when you say you drink the Kool-Aid, that means like you out with your friends, 10 people, if someone needs to pay the bill, you think to yourself, I am a future leader. I and need to be right. the one to pay. No, because you're a future leader, that's why you oh, don't need to pay. Or then you tell someone. Yeah, you tell someone to do it. Yeah, <laughs> because you're so busy, you're so busy leading Singapore that you don't have time to go and deal with little things like paying bills and all that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the danger, you see. That's the danger of like uh, elitism, like, that you start to think that Ah, yeah, you know, peasants won't understand that people are beneath you, they won't understand the, thing, the things I have about, to worry yeah. about. All oh, the things keeping me up at night are so <laughs> difficult and so busy. And, oh, you know how hard it is to run a country. That kind of thing, la, which uh, is, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 I, I, I think, especially when you're talking about young kids in the formative years, uh, maybe one thing that, that back then, okay, I'm not criticizing whatever the education system is now because I'm not a product, I, I'm not in school now, right? But yeah. if I'm looking back back then, if anything, it's probably to, yeah, la, there was, I think there needs to be more emphasis on teaching empathy, la, right? Mm-hmm. Understanding what others go through and it's not just about, you know, doing well for yourself, but again, like what Chan Chun Singh is saying here, to, to bring others, bring others with you, pull others along with you. So, yeah. I mean, you think about I think there's a video on CNA of what the speech looked like, uh, what the setting of, of the speech was. It was in a very grand hall with the RI, but, you know, there are a lot of students from other schools all sitting in the crowd as well. Like. Yeah. So, uh, and then I think that a lot of people came forward and were asking questions and, and a lot of, these were a lot of students from other schools, which was nice. Like. I think that's a yeah. good thing. So, yeah. so, at this point, I'll just go uh, like a high-level high, high level overview of the things that he spoke about. Like. So, mm-hmm. um, intro, um, he talked about the founding, um, and he went through like, you know, Arai is 200 years old. Um, mm. Arai has been at the crossroads of Singapore at many different points, like during its founding, um, during war, uh, and now at this new challenge that the world is facing, like, you know, having come out of the pandemic and mm. the economics downturn and AI and shit like that. Um, and mm. also the geopolitical tensions, you know, America, US, Russia, Ukraine, um, and what that implies for a small country like Singapore, like. Mm. Then, um, talked about how Singapore in the past has defied the odds. You know, uh, mm. there was a time when people said that Singapore, Singapore won't make it. Singapore won't make mm. it. Mm. But mm. what happened, Terence? Uh, we made it, lah. We made it. But we did, lah. Fuck, yeah, how about we did? Late, yeah, but we did. But we did. Yeah. yeah. So then, talking about okay, like um, how what will how will we survive for the next forty years to reach SG one hundred? Will RI likewise reach RI 300? What will Singapore be like then? Mm. Then he went on to talk about how people uh, are our greatest asset um, and the role of schools la, in terms of mm. pioneering education, uh, culture of innovation, nurturing leaders. Um, and then uh, he talked about the pioneering spirit to uplift all and gave some examples of previous practitioners from RI 
who mm. instituted new ways of teaching, um, new advancements of education. Um, then talked about certain things that RI is currently doing, like the mm. you know RI Livable Cities Challenge, where it's a student-driven community project, um, mm. where where RI students advocate sustainability amongst primary school students, which I found quite surprising. Then, mm. Mm. um. Then talking about how uh, to acknowledge that you're there, all right, not only because of your own abilities and hard work, but because of help from others along the way. Mm -hmm. And to recognize that you have more resources at your disposal and it is on you to help uplift the whole of society. Um, Mm. And then encouraging, you know, a culture of innovation and collaboration, throwing some questions to the audience, like how do we defend ourselves despite our Mm -hmm. finite strength in numbers? Um, shared some stories of notable Reflesians who uh, are people who graduate from RI, what they're called. And then mm. how the next generation must be rooted in service mm. um, and, and to stay uh, steadfast to the founding ideals of, of uh, RI and schools and, mm. and to cultivate just a strong desire to learn. And then mm. talked about... Um, yeah, like, you know, being willing to pass on the torch to capable people f- and, and continue that, that culture across many generations. Uh. And then mm. he ended, um, I look forward to RI producing yet more leaders of quality and commitment in service of Singapore to help us defy the odds of history and for us to not to sing another national anthem ever again. Yeah. I mean, he got military background. Uh. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I, I did a double tick when I, when, when I read that, uh, the, the yeah. transcript of his speech. I was trying to understand, yeah. what does he mean by that? I guess... He's referencing the fact that we, you know, we were colony once and, and, and we were, you know, occupied by Japanese before and we sang different mm. national anthems and all that. So mm. I think he's making a rallying call that, you know, for us. He says, uh, look, let's look towards SG100 and RI300 with confidence. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, so yeah, that last line also, I was like, hey, wow. Uh, that was a mic drop moment, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 a bit. Uh, but even yeah. if you watch the few excerpts of the speech on YouTube, uh, that you can tell the 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 gumption that he was delivering with. Like, I wish there was a whole video because after that there were questions that were asked also by seven mm. students from seven different schools. So, yes. so okay. So, how how did you feel? You know, seeing the headlines and then reading the speech. Uh, I mean, first things first was that the speech was a, uh, I mean. It really weaved through the history of RI and Singapore in the speech, right? Mm. Um, so it, it's, he's really trying to plant uh, the school's place in Singapore's history as well, uh, which was, mm. uh, I mean, it, it's not. I mean, we can, we can, uh, you, whatever th- thoughts you have about the speech, at least you know it seems like that it, it really went in depth into the history of the school, uh, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of to unpack in that speech uh, to for for the students, yeah. uh, but a lot of it is a very much. Uh, uh, I think it's like like what you said. It's in this day and age, uh, right? They, it understands. It seems to really try to tell students that uh, you know that that mindset of being the elite leaders of Singapore. You know, uh, it's not enough. It's not enough to to for for Singapore's future, uh. Um, so yeah. it is quite. I would say it was quite a wide ranging speech that that probably you know twenty years ago you would never have heard something like that being delivered to students, uh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's that's my thought. Like, I, I'm not saying that it's very good or it's very bad or what, but I just it's it's a sign of the times that you know politicians when giving speeches to fourteen year old kids and all they are really towing the you know not say towing the line but they are really pushing certain uh, narratives rather than just the usual. The usual, uh, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to think about what's the future for Singapore and all that, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so, so like um, when when I was uh reading it, oh, actually, it was about a mm. thousand students. There were six hundred and fifty RI students, three hundred and thirty-three. Mm. Uh, yeah. So so uh, around there. So like when when I was reading it. You know, like certain phrases, like you know, like Ara has a duty to bring others along, let more benefit. Uh, mm. I, I found myself like, hmm, is that a? I mean, that's in some way really hammering home the fact that that you guys are are better, and it's your mm. duty to bring society along, mm. So that was my inner wokeness. Inner wokeness. I was like, eh, what does he mean by that? But then at the mm. same time, like, um, 
the RIA is the older school. They have produced alumni who have done like um interesting shit. Uh mm. is that is that a wrong message? Uh mm. if you are kind of like, you know, encouraging the students to pay it forward to I like that he told them to recognize that um you are here not only because of your hard work, but because of a lot of things, like you know, you mm. have more access to resources. And it's so easy to shit on speeches like this. And it's so easy yeah. to be critical of people like Chan Chun Singh who uh, sometimes is not the most likable when he delivers speeches. Like, but then when I was reading this, mm. I was like, hmm, that's why I'm, I'm con- I don't know, I, I'm, still, I'm still finding out like, like what to think uh, about stuff like that like, or the notion of that okay, Ara is leading the way. It is your duty to bring people along. The practices that they practice now is for 400 per cohort, but what if it could be extended to 40,000? But is that, a, is that wrong for him to say that? Is it bad? Is it, but is it unwoke? This, this sounds like the contrarian in you trying to find something, something bad yeah, to say about this issue. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm like, ugh. But ultimately, the yeah. message is, is, it's not a bad message and all that, right? Yeah, it's, if, it's if, not. If it's my turn to try and find fault with anything, like, yeah, right? that's right. It's only at one point, I think, if you look up his, the transcript of his speech at, I think, point 49, where he says, ensuring good leadership for the long term is a never-ending challenge. The quality of our people and the character of our leadership must remain top-notch so that Singap- Singapore can continue to count for more than our size. Then I'm like, wow, bro, that's a humble brag there, right there, man. He's yeah. saying that the leadership must remain top-notch. He's saying that means the leadership now is top-notch, you know. So yeah. I'm like, wow, this, uh, this, uh, he slipped that in. Uh, like, uh, that's like a man, happy meal, so... a happy meal of politics. We feed you when you're young. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> we feed yeah, you when yeah, you're yeah. young. But and I mean... That, to, to maintain the, 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 you know, the, the narrative that our leadership is top, not, top notch, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why, that's why like, like, what, like what you said, right? We are like putting it under a microscope to find things to shit on. But then also mm. like, why, why is there this desire to, to shit on speeches like this? Is it because like right now there is that notion of like, oh, anything uh, talking to the elites at any age is something that must be like scrutinized to the max? Because we also... No, yeah, we we also speaking from the context of two people who went to RI. Who yeah. I won't deny yeah. that I benefited a lot from it. Um, mm-hmm. and I, and I won't deny that the, a lot of my best friends also come from uh, RI and RJ. Um, mm. I mean, we fell off the, <laughs> the the standard path of like uh the 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 corporate ladder, the corporate treadmill. Uh. Yeah, I think we yeah. we wandered off, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but yeah. I mean, I I think the treadmill is one thing, but. Uh, uh, the the question is: Are you a leader in your field? That's probably more important, lah, right? In my field, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Terence. Undoubtedly, yeah. even when um, like uh, how you say uh, even no la, leader in the field. What what does that mean, man? What is what is the field we're in? We're podcasting, lah, right? Mm, coffee shop talk, lah. Coffee talk, lah. Coffee shop talk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We are better than all those uncles in the coffee shops. You know, just talking we about got politics. Mics. You know. We yeah, got mics, you know. Yeah, we got mics. Yeah. We have a subreddit. Yeah, uh, no, but yeah. but I think also the the reason why you and I found this interesting beyond just being RI boys or whatever is that there has been in recent years, you know, RI has been had some controversies about uh you know appearing elitist like, Right. Mm. Uh, I think there was a you know there's a lot of debate about income inequality in 2019, and and the Raffles Institution was was uh the the name comes up quite a bit lah, right? Um mm. and there's the idea of elitism and, and RI representing lah, or being a bastion of the elitism back then, lah, you know, with with things that even like Chan Chun Singh has mentioned in his speech, like things like the Queen's scholarship and all that, right? Mm. Um being offered to the students there. So yeah, it, it is I can understand why this speech will be more closely scrutinized than other speeches at other schools at other anniversaries and all that, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, like, I think in even in 2018, uh, the, the principal was trying to, he was giving interviews and all that, trying to say that, you know, RI is not an, yeah, they, they want to debunk the view that RI is an elite school, uh, so to speak. Mm. And uh, yeah, there are all these things that, that have come up in debates in recent years about whether our, our you know, the, whether it's uh, SAP schools or RI or ACS or all that, have become this elite circle that are only open to people who live in the prime areas of Singapore. Lah, right? Mm. So mm. that's why that's why I think this speech has garnered more interest than, than usual. Lah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's a, uh, it's, it's interesting lah. Because I think one thing that we cannot deny is that even the world of being a student now is very different from how it was back then, right? And you know, just now you mentioned that it is more important than ever to teach empathy, lah, right? How you teach empathy? Who the fuck knows how 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 I I don't know. There's probably a ton of research, but I think. At this point, if you imagine last time we were in a bubble, right, of sorts, mm. but mm. there was no social media, there was no, you just live in your in your bubble, which is good and bad, lah. Now with social yeah. media, if if this culture of like, oh, we are leaders and we, you know, by having going to other schools are doing our service to community, that also feels a bit. Ugh, you gotta keep that in check, lah. You know, um, yeah. Yeah, and and that's where we, with with social media, all these things can be multiplied, lah, or or like uh, how, what's the what's the mag, magnified, mul- multiplied? I think exacerbated, uh, exacerbated, yeah, for good yeah. and bad, lah, for good and bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but but again, like uh, you know, our perspective comes from like being in RI donkey years ago, that right? Yeah. So yeah, there correct. could be things now, programs now. Maybe teachers are are better equipped to to talk about these things than than they were back then. Because really back then, it for for us, I I just remember my time that it was really all about academic excellence. Mm. Um, not not say academic excellence, but ac- academic uh um pursuits. Uh. Mm. I say excellence because I mean yeah, I was like for example, you know, you know, I was very interested to study certain humanity subjects, but mm. because you know in my secondary two exams I couldn't get a certain score, then they told me, oh, you cannot study this extra subject even if you wanted to, like even if you're interested in it. Mm. And I think, uh, yeah, when you're 14, 15 years old, trying to process something like that, like, hey, I am actually interested to study something. I, I am, for the first time in my life, I I kind of know, like, hey, I, I find these topics interesting. But then being told that, oh, you can't study it because yeah, your, your, your grades in mathematics and science and all that are not good enough. Um, it kind of, you know, maybe it, it kind of perverts your your relationship with, with um, learning. A little bit, mm, mm. and I, I would, for me, I mean, just in my my anecdote, my case was yeah, it did it did make me turn me off learning for for a few years like, you know, and thankfully, like that's something I managed to pick up again later in my life, not too late, but later in my life, you know, uh, after army entering university and all that. Uh, so yeah, you know, these these things do have effects. The things that you tell students, the way you structure their their curriculum and learning, do have effects on whether they become. Like what the government says, like lifelong learners, you know, and whether mm. they enjoy learning through their lives. So, so now, now yeah. you enjoy learning, lah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I enjoy reading a lot more. Uh, I don't. Know, I think the most important thing is also acknowledging that you. Uh, the first thing about knowing anything is to acknowledge that you know nothing, lah. Right, mm. and that's that's the approach I take with a lot of things these days, lah. That like as much as I've read or as much as I think I know about something. Uh, there probably is like a lot more. There are a lot more people who probably know more about the topics, and you should go and read up and learn from them as well. Uh. Mm. Yeah. Then why every time I send you a new app to try, uh, it takes you like fucking three years to try it. You interested uh, to learn, is it, huh, guys? <laughs> no, no, there's other things to do. Le- learning is not just about <laughs> using apps, right? Why is it use apps only means you learn? Is it you use TikTok? You learn? Is it? <laughs> You use TikTok, no, you, learn. you use Facebook, you, you learn, learn, is it? You have to learn how to use what? There's a lot oh, of learning. Try other notion things you can also, do to, must write you can a read, white paper like that. You can read a book to learn. <laughs> it's not just about using apps. Only fans come out, you must use already, is it? You must use to learn, is it? You go and try no, a what? bit, lah, then you, you learn a bit. You can be selective, what? Yeah, you can, you can be selective <laughs> about it, what? right? There's so many things to learn. Why is it must learn apps? Apps, straight in, must learn apps. <laughs> Wow, oh, NFT, NFT, big, big deal. Oh, I must go and read everything NFT. Wow, oh, AI, AI. Wow, oh, I'll go and read everything AI. No, it's not how the oh, learning works. Oh, point, uh, Terrence. Never huh? criticize Terrence's uh, <laughs> interest to learn. No. Never yeah, yeah, yeah. criticize. But you no, know, that's no, not you the see, thing that's the said. thing. That's the thing. For you, like, exactly, that's the RI mentality back in the time, like, right? Where <laughs> if it's not useful, what's the point of learning? App is useful. Uh. Learn app. Uh. Learn app. Go and learn app. <laughs> Then see, then I tell you, if I tell you about what I, I was reading yesterday about like some, no. you know, Venetian hey. history or like no, the history is, about the, the Catholic app, Church or like, cannot. The, the <laughs> app, if it can save you two hours a day to help you read stuff that you enjoy, isn't that better? Huh? But so it's not just, ex- not just Golan app, not just hashtag Golan app. 
No, but my, no. my experience is that the learning of the app, I spent two hours trying to having to <laughs> learn the app and troubleshoot every time it has problems. So that's where I'm coming from. Where it doesn't give me, it doesn't free me two or two more hours of my day. Yeah. <laughs> because you never put your whole heart into it, Terrence. Yeah. Your whole heart. No, but there's you always, said I think for you there's always like different phases. First is the learning how to use the app. Then after that you you must customize the heck out of it on right. You must have no, like no, no, no. everything, not everything. system, that's, everything placed on. That's why I like the iPhone because I don't need to customize a lot of shit. So so it's a nuance. Nuance uh, uh nuance trait, Terrence. Oh, okay, but, okay, okay. But you know, going back yeah. to what you said about not being told to not study a, a topic and all, but that's a mm. Singapore thing, one. It's not just a it's not just a RI thing, like. Uh, correct lah, correct, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, right. it's not, you're right, you're right, yeah. It's not just, it's, right. but I guess, I guess maybe, uh, if, if anything, because RI is so academically focused lah, right, mm, that, mm. that the pressure just feels so much more, you know, like, like all your mm. friends are, you use, I mean, it's, it's literally that, that kind of thing where all your friends are going or they are, they are staying in class to study something and yeah, because your grades were not good enough, you pack up your bags and go to another uh, another class la, or another room or something like that. La. You mm-hmm. know, uh, especially for languages, it was, it was, even before there was like, you know, streaming of languages and all that, uh, there was already, RI was already like preempting by, you know, by checking your grades and then, okay, you guys are not so good, you guys go to another class and all things like that. La. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, but that's why, that's why RI, I have no idea how it is now. I know we've previously had some people uh, message us saying they listen to us for GP, which I guess mm. they are in JC. So maybe they are in RJ, maybe they are not. But I think, yeah, it is different now. And, and you know, the more we talk about it, I think one thing to also highlight is that maybe maybe the unease uh, when I hear the lines like, you know, RI has duty to bring others along, let alone more benefit. Mm. The one big realization after, you know, coming out of RI going to the real world is that okay, RI, maybe you are you're good with academics, but life is so many other things. Mm, so mm. so the same way, okay, like RI education, academics, uh, you know, bring other people along. But you also need to recognize everybody needs to recognize that not going to RI doesn't mean you have nothing to bring others along in your own domain, la, mm. along in your own field. La, because yeah, you go through life, beyond a certain point, your academics don't mean shit. Like, whether you did well in school, it doesn't mean shit when you're in the real world. Unless, you work, think, in a, unless you work in a university, like, right? Or you're yeah, doing yeah, a PhD. Then academics mean a lot. <laughs> that <laughs> is your world. Don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't go to your academic institution saying, hey, I just heard uh, academics don't mean shit. No. So why you fire me? Like, Dude, yeah. you're a fucking academic, academic okay? So yeah. if academic yeah. is not in your vocation or title, uh, mm. there's a lot of real world experience like, and, and I think the dangerous thing is when you think just because you did well in school or academics doesn't mean you have other people don't have anything to offer because the yeah there's so much to learn from from each other mm, mm, mm. Oh, well said well said so much, so to, much learn to learn from each other so much yeah. to learn from each other yeah but uh, overall yeah so you think uh, overall how would you grade Chan Chun Singh's speech oh, how would I grade uh? I think I think uh, it was uh Knowing that he's giving it to like the future generations of Singaporeans, uh. yeah. Mm-mm. I thought I thought it was it was it was okay lah. It was I after reading the headlines uh, of the articles, I'm like, oh shit, how how is this gonna turn out? But I thought okay, it's it's more well more rounded than I than I would have thought. Uh, yeah. So let's see if yeah. I have a kid in RI, the kid listening to this, I'll be like, okay lah. Still still need to discuss some stuff, but not yeah. like wow lah eh. The the best thing that came out of this for me, the whole thing was a comment on Reddit, you know, like uh, about the article, you know, bring others along, not separate yourself from the field. The comment mm. was, is this why RI minister bring ACS minister to Ren Banglo? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Zing. Oh, love it. Fucking mic drop, man. Mic drop, drop. Mic drop. Uh, yeah, if you, if you don't yeah. know the context of this, you can go listen to our previous episode. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah. But you, I, I think how, one, would you how would you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, not bad lah, not bad. As in, as in, uh, it didn't, it didn't smack of like yeah, like, elitism and and yeah. Although it weaved in a lot of history of RI and 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 how RI is such a spe- it's, you know it's a special school and all that, but it weaves into the larger context of of Singapore's history also lah. So actually, it was a pretty good speech. And uh, I mean, the one, yeah. I mean, if you look at the transcript, the one word that that is. In all caps, you know. I think because I think I don't know how he delivered it, but probably it was meant to to be really emphasized to everyone. Uh, was the word uplift? 
Mm-hmm. They have it as all caps in the in the written transcript. Uh. So it tells you something about the the emphasis of what what he's trying to say, lah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean in the transcript. <laughs> you can imagine him reading it, blah 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 blah. Uplift, uplift. <laughs> How are you caps in the transcript? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe even strange. for the writers, they're like, okay, uh, Chan, Chan, Chun Sing, just make sure you emphasize this word. Yeah, make if sure there's one word that you cannot you cannot yeah, fuck correct. around with, it's this word. Uplift. You must use the yeah. word. Okay. Uplift. Yeah. Correct. If there's one thing to take away and to shove down the students' throats, it's uplift. The concept of uplift. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Cool man, <coughs> but yeah. So um, you know, speaking of uh, uh, history and and and, and changing the rising tides and changing, the changing uh, the world that we we live in changing. Um, there's also something that has been around for donkey years that is changing in Singapore. Mm. Uh, yeah. Something that I think a lot, almost everyone will recognize. But uh, you, you not sure if you'll miss it when it's gone. But what is this thing? It is the red sign that you often see around protected areas in Singapore. Mm. Uh, that you know the red and white like Basically, there's text no admittance to unauthorized persons, and in different languages or the four main languages. Then in the middle of the rectangle, there's this silhouette uh, of a guard pointing a gun mm. at another male individual yeah. with his hands up. Yeah. And I'm sure even just by hearing that, you you know the image that we are talking about, lah. Mm. Um, so the latest update is that uh, come 15th uh, May 2023 oh shit two days ago um, the Singapore police is updating the design uh, for the next five years so mm. so during the transition period you might see some of the old you might see some of the new but what is the difference Terence in the silhouette in the middle of the diagram I think the big difference is there's no longer, you know, one guard pointing a gun at another person, but it's just a an image of a a guard standing in um I don't know what to call it in in Sadia position, position. Uh, holding uh. a rifle, uh, you know, uh, like literally just standing there, uh, kind of like imagine like the you know the the NBA silhouette of like mm. someone like standing there bouncing a basketball. But mm. this one is like the soldier version. So a soldier just standing there facing the camera and holding a gun. Lah. So yeah. it doesn't look as, um, I mean, on first glance, it doesn't look as threatening as the old photo, lah, right? Which yeah. literally was a gun pointing at the person with their hands up ready, lah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, I mean, if, if just to explain to people listening who might not know what the sedia position is, it's uh, at attention. Lah. So feet together. Standing up straight mm. with rifle. La. So, yeah. so <laughs> the previous design was <clears throat> implemented uh, back in 1998 under the Repealed mm. Protected Acts and Protected Places Act. Mm. Um, and the police said it's timely to refresh the design. La. And the main reason, apparently, uh, which was covered in the news, was um, the reason why they wanted to update the, the graphic was to have something that is more representative of guards on duty. Mm. And I find that fucking hilarious. Why? Because <laughs> you mean like you mean you need to tell people, oh shit, our Singapore guards are not uh always in a position where they have a gun pointed at someone with their hands up. <laughs> That's yeah. not representative of our guards on guard duty, guys. <laughs> Most yeah, of yeah. the time our guards are standing at attention with their rifles pointed in the sky, not at someone else. Mm. So I find that so damn hilarious. And like you, like, I mean I don't know, this is meant to be a deterrent, right? Yeah. <laughs> the new one just doesn't feel that deterring. La. Yeah, yeah. The new one feels more like, um, okay, la, yeah, la. it's just someone, someone standing watching, at attention. Yeah, that's why. There's someone <laughs> watching. <laughs> yeah. It's the kind of silhouette that, yeah, la, I would look at it and I point to my kid and say, oh, that's, a, that's what a soldier does, la, stands there like this, you know? But it doesn't look like, as fearful. It doesn't look as scary as the... The one where there's a gun, potentially a gun pointed at you, lah, right? Yeah, it's almost like a fo- a photo moment, lah. You know, like those British guards. Yeah. Um. Uh. You go there and take a photo. That's why I feel like, what well, what gave rise to this? Like, uh, is it because gun pointing is generally frowned upon now? I guess. Gun violence, ah, uh, because of gun violence in the in the US in the Western world, it's a very sensitive topic, like, Is it? But actually, the 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 thing is, the truth is that um, you know, even in the military and all that, there are rules of engagement. Um, so to get to the point where you're pointing a gun at somebody, uh, there's a lot of steps that have to happen before that, right? You know. Mm. Uh, so 
maybe what they're just saying is that uh, they're not saying that you'll get a gun pointed at you just for entering the area, but but uh, you know, you will. There, there are people on duty watching you, lah, right? You will have a conversation with someone at attention, <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah, then they will yeah. decide whether to point the gun at you or not, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They even changed the text. Previously, mm. it was no admittance to unauthorized persons. Now it's force may be used, yes. no entry for unauthorized persons. Yeah. So, so changing admittance to entry, okay, smaller word, easier to understand, good. Force may be used. Mm-hmm. I guess because when you see the guard in position like that, you're probably thinking, oh, he looks like a peaceful guy. Then you read, oh, yeah. force may be used. <laughs> I need to be careful. Force may be used. Whereas the previous one was like, you fuck around, you'll get a gun in your face. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing about the, the previous one was that uh, you look at the guard uniform or whatever he's wearing. Mm. Uh, it looks more like, it looks like he's wearing a beret more than anything. Mm. Like than a helmet or whatever. And, and a belt. Yes, <laughs> and a belt. <laughs> Those are the only discernible things you can see on the silhouette of the guard. But in this new one, you can see that this guard is uh is wearing like full battle, almost like full battle order kinda. Not only does he have his rifle, but he's got like hip bag and then that looks like a revolver on the side and all that. And you can tell very clearly that he's like wearing like army boots, uh, cause got the it has that, you know, the, the the garter and holding the pants and all that. Yeah. Um so yeah, it is a it is a more a more accurate representation of what a guard looks like, la, right? Uh, but but and maybe that's the thing, la, They don't want it to make. Maybe they also don't want it to look so comical, like uh, a guard wearing a beret and a belt, holding a gun and pointing at a person who goes ah, that kind of thing, la. There's almost like a comic element to it, la, right? Yeah. Maybe that's why they did like it, la. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, it's easy to understand. Like this mm-hmm. new one, you're looking at it, you're like, okay, he's got like a bumps on his legs and all. Then <laughs> yeah. you have to, you have to <laughs> play him. Oh yeah, oh he's a pocket filled with stuff and then his shoulder has a bit of bumps. Oh, he's it's got, the shoulder. He's got all his snacks, ah. Uh, yeah. Inside his left pocket is all his M and M's. Milo, it's Milo Teasels. The the Horlicks and everything, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it just felt like well, the purpose of this is to be like even in the dark, right? In low lit areas, you want to be able to see it, right? Yeah. Then this yeah. one it looks like one of those what's that Ro- Ro- um Roshank test, uh, you know right? that ink block. Ro- Roshesh, the Roshesh, yeah. Roshesh, yeah, Roshesh yeah. test. Mm. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? Roshesh? I Roshak? Or something like that. Roshesh, the Inblot yeah. test, like Inblot test. Yeah, the Inblot test, yeah. Oh, iconic, yeah, this one. I'm, mm, mm. I'm quite sad. Like, I get the gun violence thing, I get rules of engagement where, yeah, you shouldn't just be pointing guns in people's faces. But, mm, mm. hmm, interesting. Uh. Maybe it's also because, um, you know, but. The protected areas and protected places, they are only for sensitive installations such as military camps or and immigration checkpoints. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be stuff like, oh, you know, like, I don't know, the is- I guess the Istana also. Basically, not, not places where you would bring like kids to, la, right, for sightseeing yeah. or something. And suddenly yeah, see that and your sure. kids like, oh, mommy, why is the gun being pointed at the stranger? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. It's kinda... but, but it's true. La. I think maybe... Maybe a general or someone very high ranking like point out the obvious like, hey, does do our guards look like this? Do they wear berets and, and belts like this? Do they carry these long rifles with that you know, now we're like Star twenty one and all that, right? Yeah. Um so in, in in some sense this new uh this new silhouette, you can't see the shape of the gun per se, like. you can see the shape of the barrel and the and the butt of the gun, but you can't see the body. So if they change the rifle Next time to a longer one or what they don't have to update the image also la. yeah. Mm. In some mm. ways, that's that's smarter also la. Whereas the previous one is very clear; it's that kind of very long rifle with a rifle sling and all that, right? It's not a Star Twenty One, that's for sure. But then, but then if they want to say more representative of guards on duty, yeah, equipment wise mm. and all. But you want to say you look at the guards who stands at attention all the time, sir. One mm. leg will be like balong long one side, or maybe mm. they are like slouched a bit. So this one, this one, it just feels like can you imagine they really aggregated the posture of every guard uh, on guard duty in Singapore, like NS, NSS and all that, and came up with the image. I think it'd be very different, lah. Yeah. So it'd be interesting. So I wonder if there's someone that. No, I wonder if there's like one particular soldier that they used uh, for the model to get this silhouette, lah. <laughs> you know, like how the police has one. There's that one uh, uh, policeman who does the stop, stop, uh, yeah, uh, right. shop theft sign, yeah, right? Theft, he got right, famous right, yeah. for that. Uh, I'll be very curious to find out who the soldiers, who switched soldier silhouette this is, lah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> interesting, uh, interesting. Just I was just surprised, lah. I was just surprised when I saw this. Yeah, I, I, I had no clue that this was in the works at all, lah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah this correct. needed updating. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, cool, but yes, uh, let's move on to the one shot comment. And what is your one shot comment of uh, these last few days? My one shot comment um, was by a long time commenter, Jungle Jimbo88, who, mm. uh, in response to my disclosing of the fact that during a recent medical, I came to know that I actually have a suspected third nipple. Yes. Uh, he actually used ChatGPT to create a poem. To mm. celebrate my discovery. Yeah. Um, and he gave it a very detailed prompt. Compose a poem mm. to celebrate our friend Harish's discovery of a third nipple in the form of an iambic pentameter with references to the villain Sakra Manga from the James Bond movie The Man with the Golden Gun and explain why people may have a third nipple uh, and give a source of <laughs> information. Like. So, fuck man, dude. It, it churned out like, uh, like 30, 30 lines of a poem. Yeah. And then like yeah. other redditors wrote haikus and Jungle Jimbo also gave like specific um quotes of, of why third nipples come about. Like. So I really, really appreciate the effort. Yeah, yeah. It's really a thing, uh, like uh AI <laughs> creating ent- uh entertainment, uh talking about you. So it's really that's not my thing. That, that's, that, that's not my thing. That's not my thing. Okay, that is not People my thing. People talking about you. That's your thing. <laughs> People talking about me. Yeah. Huh? That one sometimes can be my thing. That one I enjoy. That one uh, I enjoy. Uh, okay. Yeah, like, yeah. But not but yeah, not yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's certain 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 things, lah. Certain things. Certain things. It's a tool, mm-hmm. Terence. It's a tool. Yeah. 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 But what about you? Uh yeah, I think uh the just the comments on our last podcast, which were about uh was about the. The ride out, ride out gate, lah, so to speak. I think, uh, you know, everyone, there's a uh, everyone's calling it. I or at least not everyone, lah. I think people, some people have christened it the, uh, the ride out gate. Uh, about Shamugam and Vivian, uh, getting the, getting those colo- staying in those colonial bungalows, lah. Mm. But uh, I think one of the Furby bot, Furby underscore bot, uh, brought up. Brought, uh, commented saying during this episode all I thought about was this video of Vivian debating Shan and uh, yeah they provide a link to a video which is a pretty awesome video I think from the 90s or 80s or 90s where a very young uh, student version of Vivian Balakrishnan was debating a very young uh, Minister Shamugam mm. and uh, in a televised debate from, from donkey years ago and it's really quite quite amazing to watch right you really see uh, you really see two two uh two people who eventually become political allies, uh in the early days sparring sparring with each other beforehand. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and I think and, like Vivian had a very good reputation of being a spa a good sparrer, uh, right? Yeah, correct, correct. That's right. Yeah, this was like uh, yeah, long time ago, man. Uh, I think Shamugam they said Shamugam, Shamugam was then thirty one years old. Yeah. Mm. Which is kind of crazy, yeah. Uh, you think about it, yeah. This, this, and this was an interview from what, almost thirty, thirty three years ago, I think nineteen, nineteen, uh, ninety, yeah. Thirty three years ago, Ooh. pretty crazy, Ooh. yeah. So do check. Now it they out. can debate on their walks, lah. <laughs> right, they can debate yeah. on their walks. <laughs> hey, you know, yeah. like twenty seven, right out, how? Huh? Oh, twenty eight, oh, twenty eight, twenty eight looks good. Oh yeah, what are you doing with your five hundred, uh, two hundred thousand square feet of uh home? Yeah. 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 Interesting. 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 Kind of crazy, yeah. How crazy. How far. How far. Yeah. How far we've come. Yeah, but uh, yeah. And then your one shot thing. What is your one shot thing? Uh, my one shot thing is uh, is the trailer for Dave season three. I think in the past, mm. what my one shot thing has been about the show uh, Dave, which was a mm. series uh, on FX, which you can see through Disney Plus also. It's a comedy mm-hmm. series written and starring uh, Little Dicky, the mm-hmm. the Jewish rapper, who yes. has made some awesome videos in the past. And he did two seasons of this show that I really, really enjoyed. And I thought it was going to end. Mm-hmm. But then now it's a season three. The trailer came out a month ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty damn stoked. And oh shit, the show is out already uh, April 5th. Oh damn. I got to get on that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so so it's just, I mean, his trailers are always ridiculous. Like. So yeah. the season three trailer is 
not doesn't doesn't fall short. So yeah, it's cool. Mm-hmm. It's cool. What about you, man? Um, I think the my one short thing is the uh one of the product reviews of a locally made uh not locally made a Singapore. I guess you can say is it a product made by a Singapore company lah. Mm. Uh, and this product is the is made by Dyson, and that mm. is the um. What what is it called? Oh shit! I can't I can't pull it up. But it's basically Dyson has created a set of headphones, mm. uh, noise cancelling headphones that also has a mask at the front that doubles as an air purifier, and it blows clean air. It sucks in uh, air from from the the actual ear cups of your headphones, uh-huh. and then it filters it, and then after that it blows the air around your nose area. So oh, uh, to be <laughs> To be, uh, I think I just I just want to get the name correct because uh, a Dyson Zone, yeah, the Dyson Zone headphones. So yes, there it's the product is out now. In mm. fact, I've seen advertising for it um on bus stops in Singapore as well. So you know, it started when it was first announced. People were like, "What the hell is this thing?" And they really thought it was an April Fool's joke, like, right? But the mm. product is literally out there for you to buy now. I think it's pretty expensive. It's like one thousand USD, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, and the uh, interesting review that I read, uh, I, I watched about it was by none, none other than MKBHD, man. And the oh. headline uh, and the and the title of his video is "This is the dumbest product I've ever reviewed." <laughs> <laughs> so, at first, I was like, "Oh God, is it some clickbait title?" Where, where he, you know, it's not as bad a product as he, he says it is, but but he's just saying it's dumbest just to get people to click on it. But no, he actually uh, bought the device. He used it. Uh, he got doc. I think he got uh, someone who's trained in you know someone in the medical field to come and talk about whether the benefits of having air purified and then and then and then um, a wash in front of your nose. Mm. Uh, so yeah, he really breaks down why he thinks this is a dumb product <laughs> to buy. Uh. Yeah, um, and then I think towards the end he says. You know, he 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 makes a point about that. This isn't about selling this product because you know nobody's. I mean, only people who want to flex thousand dollars will buy it. But he makes a point that it's it's a loss leader in the sense that it's meant to just get Dyson in the headlines uh, for the engineering. Uh, but how many units that actually sells another thing? Uh? Oh, so it's almost yeah. like just like putting on the market what should be a prototype, uh, Almost yeah, like you know, one yeah. of those craziest prototypes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but he, but he makes the, he makes very good points in that. You would think that oh, it's very good that you filter the air around your feet into your nose, but he's he makes an argument that it's actually even worse than than what uh what solutions there are now, like wearing a mask or anything like that, lah. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah, I think it's a it's a very good product review in the sense that it's it's got a clickbaity title, but it he does do his uh what he needs to do a proper product review, lah. Yeah. Wow, solid, eh? Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Yeah. Cool man. cool, man. Cool. All right. All right. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to y'all soon. Yeah.